Good morning. Today we set off to pick up our new rescue chickens. So we're looking forward to that. We've had some before, uh, so they're going to join our little flock. But in the meantime, I need to go back in time. It's all had a good scrub down. Now it's just a case of waiting for it to dry and then we can sort the rest out. While we're talking about chickens, we may as well cover a few of the issues that come with them. They're great company, they're great fun, they're very charismatic, they've got lots of energy and they, they can't fail to cheer you up. However, there are a couple of problems. So they do attract mites. So red mites are one of the big issues. So I've got this wonderful mite spray stuff and this is, uh, this is gonna go all over now, the, the inside as well. Uh, I'm gonna give the chickens a little spray, but it's gonna go inside as well. So all of their coop is gonna get done. A good, good all round in all the crevices and stuff. And then, and then we're gonna use some of this stuff. So I've never really been sure exactly how to pronounce this. But anyway, if you know, then do let me do let me know in the comments. It's essentially this. <laughs> uh, it is very, very good for them. So again, sprinkle it all over their coop. You can even put it in the food, apparently. Um, and again, give them a little dust over with it if you feel the need. But I'm going to make sure the coop has had a good covering of all of this in with their new bedding to make sure that, uh, that it's, it's as good as it can be for our, for our new chickens coming in. While we're on the subject of things chickens attract, just want to show you these a little. So these are mouse traps, and we've got a couple set up just because occasionally the uh, the chickens do kind of attract. One of the things that we have in the chicken coop, which is uh, which is a great success, it's this. So it's a timer for the door. And so what it does is you can set it to like times as in eight, nine o'clock, whatever you like, or you can have it dawn and dusk. So it automatically rises and falls depending, which is absolutely great because I don't like getting out of bed first thing in the morning. So this works a treat for that. Now that the work is done, let's have a little tour around. So this is Chickenopolis and this is where they live. So as we come into the space here, you can see it's all closed off. We've got a lovely coop for them. All cleaned out, ready to go. Got some water, got some food, got fresh bed in. I've added another little roost post there for them so that there's plenty of room. There's a couple of boxes there. And then as we go around, you can see there's some undergrowth and some trees. So quite a lot of foliage up above here. So the sun gets through, but it also allows them a certain amount of shade and the ability to sort of be in the undergrowth, which is, I believe, their natural habitat. So they've got a sand bath here. They like to mess about in that. So we've got water bowsers. There's a couple of water places and food places about. So that's just to stop them getting sort of aggressive with one another over that. So again, lovely back end here where we've got lots of the things to, for them to root round with. So as you can probably see, I haven't been overly fastidious about cleaning up all the bits and bobs that fall to the floor from cutting everything back. That's because I don't need to. The chickens actually really enjoy it. So they, they absolutely love scratching around in here and there's plenty, plenty of room for them. And we do let them out as well quite a lot. So overall, I think they got a pretty good life. So don't forget, like, subscribe and share. It really helps us out. And as you can see, she's, uh, she's very keen for you to join in. As today is such a special day, I'm going to be rocking the special socks. The chicken relocation device is complete. So essentially it's just a dog crate and that's what we're going to be putting them into travel. We just had a woman when we pulled up 
um, hide from the dog. It was it was quite strange. She stayed sort of a couple of feet away and held on to her dog. And, and when I said, oh, Chestnut is friendly, she said, oh, my dog's been attacked by one like that before. She said, I'm not judging. And I said, well, of course you are, because you've made that assumption. Um, she's actually really friendly with other dogs, which she is. But I totally get why people might have uh, negative connotations towards the breed. Um, yeah, I think that's just the stigma that goes with it, isn't it? And it's a shame, really, because we've rescued her and she is genuinely adorable. So it's a shame and something that I, I hope people can get over. I think this is one of my problems. Always what's over the next hill. I'm always interested. What's over the next hill? What does the new the next view looks like? I think this is probably why I have the van in the first place. I've always kind of been the same in regards to wanting to not sit still and uh, always got to be doing things. So the van is great for that. But, but here we go, look, we're traipsing up another hill just to see what it looks like from the top. The dog loves it, by the way. She's more than happy. It's a bit boggy underfoot, to put it mildly. We're, uh, where are we today? We're in a place called Blakeney on the outskirts, about to go and pick up the chickens. We're walking the dog first, but um, it's on the banks of the River Severn and, and a lot of places are really badly flooded, including this field. Even though we're up this incline, it's still very, very boggy. But uh, anyway, I wonder whether it's going to be worth it. Let's, let's wait and see, shall we? This is what Louise is fascinated by. The tree has been struck by lightning. So the tree has a certain sort of beauty about it. Um, and it's just starting to bud as well. So what looks like something that's dead actually has life in it. I know how the tree feels to be honest with you. <laughs> and so this one here, look again. So this wonderful angle. So they're actually really attractive looking things. Not sure if I've done something today. She keeps walking away from me with the dog. And there's the first sign for the chickens. Right there on the post. And Welfare Trust, here we go. Head south. In a quarter of a mile, turn right. Oh, the sat-nav's wrong because these look very much like chicken kind of people. <laughs> Let's have a look and see. Now, can you hold her please? That's right, yeah. So my name is Matt State. We might be a couple of minutes early. Um, well, we um, I did originally book four, and then I said two, but now we're going in the middle for three. If that's okay, if you have them. Oh, in that case, two it is. She's just a bit shouty because of the van. Hello! Have you been Yes. Yes, you have. You come know the system. Uh, I know the system, but we didn't come here last time. Oh, we went right, to Shaw okay. Newton, I think it was. Yeah. Uh, right, okay. If I can ask you to swing round and then reverse down and see the lady stood in the gateway and, and reverse where they are. Okay. And they'll bring the girls out to you. Okay, that's great. Yeah, serious kit and everything. So, yeah, Thank you. Have space. <laughs> that's great. Thanks very much. We've just collected the chickens. They're sat in their uh, little crate in the back waiting for the journey home. I don't know whether you can see them there, but they're happy enough. All tucked away, they're not going anywhere until we get back safe. Uh, the main thing we've got to do now is stop. Where's she gone? Where's she gone? Where's she gone? There we are. Stop this one getting overexcited about the new smells. I meant chestnut, not Louise. Here we are, safely home with the ladies. So the girls are in the crate here. They've had a fine old journey back. They seem happy enough. Um, so yeah, we're gonna introduce them now in a moment. We're gonna take them in through to their garden 
into the chicken area and let them meet the the others so we have two existing chickens as you probably know we did have four originally they're from the hen welfare trust the british hen welfare trust um, i will put the link in the description and i will um, stick it here on screen for you so it's worth taking a look if you're interested in getting chickens it is worth taking a look because these are basically old battery hens that was going to be well basically at the end of life because they're no use to anyone so the basically they can't make money for from them now they're not financially viable because they've stopped laying so frequently however uh, we've had our other girls now for a, a couple of years and they're and, and they're really great fun to have around so they don't they don't lay as much now they're very sporadic in their laying the girls now but these guys uh, we had 18 months plus of a very solid mostly an egg a day so for us it's it's great we don't need hundreds of eggs every single day and we like having them around so if you're thinking of getting uh, if you're thinking of getting chickens it's a great place to start is the the hen welfare trust give them a look up and uh, and see if you could you know basically save them from the slaughterhouse So they can see each other now. So these new girls, they can see the old girls and they're having a little squawk at one another. So I'm just about to introduce them now and open the doors and let them all say hello. So I'm gonna let the girls out now. This is the first time uh, that they've been out. You can hear the other girls, the old girls, they're making quite a noise. They, uh, you know, they're aware there are new, new chicks on the block. going to be a bit reluctant it's no surprise really considering what they've been through when we got the, the first lot and we put them out they they clearly hadn't seen grass before or been on grass because it was like um watching them was like somebody stepping into sort of really cold water of the sea for the first time you know, just sort of having a little dip here she comes come on in any of this hello girls so they're very raggedy looking again i wouldn't worry about that in a week or two they're going to start really filling out they're going to the feathers back and they start to look really nice so you can see the difference from the, from the old girls anyway in a moment when i let them out but for for now i just want these to come out and just just get there we are just have a bit used to it so even though they look really rough they won't fall off they're okay right let's let the other ones out So what I found fascinating when I first got the chickens was um, some of these terms that we hear all the time, hen pecked, home to roost, all that sort of thing, they're, they're based in serious fact. These chickens, they can be really blunt and vicious to one another if they so choose, and that's where the hen peck comes from. So we want to try and make this go as well as it possibly can because they've all got to get along and, and we don't want any dramas. So at the moment, it's just letting them get used to one another. They've got to sort this out. Yeah, no, that's okay. We've got to sort this. I don't know whether you can hear this, but the girls are making a terrible racket. The ladies that have been with us now for a while, they're clearly not happy that there's these interlopers in their space. So the game now is to try and uh, hopefully get them used to one another because obviously they've got to get along. So there's already been one or two little skirmishes, shall we say. Um, and just hope it doesn't go on for too long that they settle. So they're all out at the moment and we're giving them all some time just to root around and just sort of try and get along in the hope that they do. Because if not, um, 
one of them is going to be for the pot, I guess. <laughs> Joking. That's a ridiculously brave or stupid chicken, I'm not sure which. But I'm actually a little bit concerned that she might... So this, this chicken is just ridiculously... She's already picked fights with the other chickens, and now she's coming to investigate the dog, who uh, up until recently wanted to murder all the chickens that she saw. So we're, the reason she's out now is we're trying to introduce them because obviously we don't want her murdering the chickens. But I'm more concerned at this point of that chicken murdering the dog, if I'm honest. <laughs> Good girl. This, um, for those who don't know, we've only had Chestnut five or six weeks. And um, when we first got her, she had no training whatsoever. And she would try to kill the chickens on site. So we've been working really hard on this. And now we're at a point where this uh, nice piece of prosciutto ham is more interesting than the chickens, which is a good thing. All right, good girl. Good girl. So we're gonna wrap this up today. The chickens are running around. Uh, they're hopefully starting to get used to the space and each other. We'll see what happens a little later on. Um, well, I will try and mention this again in future videos, just to give you an update as to how the girls are doing. Um, Chestnut did really well. There was a couple of times there where I was, uh, uh, I was a bit concerned because they got very, very close to chickens. They were very curious. I found that quite surprising. Chickens were very curious. So I'm going to say goodbye for today and we'll update you in future videos.